is Scott Wilkinson. I am the uh, director of content at absforum.com. I'm also the host of the Home Theater Geeks podcast on the Twit Network. And uh, I'm happy to be here to introduce the panelists to talk about UHD displays, the first part of the puzzle that seems to be falling into place here very rapidly. Um, let me uh, bring them up, everybody here. Uh, let's start with uh, Jim Sandusky, the Vice President of Strategic Product Planning at Sharp. Here he is. Uh, next we have Scott Ramirez, the Vice President of Product Marketing and Development at Toshiba. Uh, Dan Shinasi, the Senior Marketing Manager of TV Product Planning at Samsung. And finally, Tim Alessi, Director of New Product Development at LG Electronics. So, um, all of you obviously have uh, Ultra HD um, displays uh, in the market or soon to be. Um, and I wanted to start by asking, we've, been, we've heard that Ultra HD is not only about more pixels, although that does seem to be one of the primary points that are being made. What, so what are the primary benefits of higher spatial resolution? Let's, talk about, let's start with that. Scott? So, in my opinion, mm -hmm. when you talk, we can talk about pixel resolution, we can talk about bit rates, we can talk about the color of bits. None of those things are benefits. Right? Benefits are what the consumer can enjoy, what they enjoy is high resolution giving a better picture book. And what that allows them to do, that high resolution, is really they can sit closer to that screen. By sitting closer to that screen, it envelops more of their field of vision. That gives them a more immersive experience. They can fit a larger screen into a smaller place, sit closer to it, and they'll feel more like a movie theater experience than they could with a 1080p set. Anybody else want to jump in on that? No. I'll, I'll jump in on that. I think Scott hit the nail on the head as far as picture quality, ever since I've been involved in the TV industry, it's always the number one key buying factor that people name when they're buying a TV. And the good thing about Ultra HD uh, is that resolution is a very easily understandable spec. Uh, you don't have to go into a great deal of detail. They know that 2160 is twice 1080, or <laughs> four times if you want to multiply yeah, it times. Yeah. So, so the good thing for the for the overall category is we can talk, as Scott said, a lot about bit rates and all that kind of thing. But higher resolution, bigger screen in a smaller space is a real easy consumer message to get across. And it gets into an immersion as well. And, uh, I think Scott did it on the head. The, the closer you are, the wider your field of view. The wider field of view, the more immersive experience uh, it is. And complement that with not only the resolution, uh, but you know, the wider color gamut. Uh, more gradations of color, so it's been just overall a more immersive experience. Yeah, I think to, to add to that is uh, what I like in uh, Ultra HD too is it's like looking through a window because the pixels uh, that even you know depending on how close you are to the screen, but the pixels that exist and with a 1080p picture basically disappear, and so it's literally like looking through a window. And as you look at uh, you know each each of our you know competitive sets. Uh, the color gamut, it just looks like a, the most natural picture that one has ever seen, you know, rendered on a, on a TV screen. And at the same time, when you particularly look at scenes that have a lot of depth from the, the, the front to the back, it has almost kind of a, a natural 3D look, uh, you know, without obviously needing uh, you know, to wear glasses. So I think it's that, you know, like looking through a window type of appearance is one of the key benefits that consumers will readily see with, with 4K or Ultra HD sets. A couple of questions come to mind based on these first comments. First is, as you say, like looking out a window, that's kind of what we were told about HD, you know, about 1080p. So is, it, is this going to be like a cleaner window? <laughs> I, can I start? Yeah, yeah, please. They all agreed with me last time, so <laughs> <laughs> they worked out okay. Uh, 
It so, would be like somebody just squeegeeing the window. Yeah. So I, I, I think you know, over the course of time, there are features that and, and benefits that the consumer wants, and there are features and benefits that the industry wants to sell. Right? And, Push versus pull. Huh? You know, so let's just say 3D might be one that the industry wanted to sell. Let's take but, example. But, but picture quality is always one that the consumer has wanted and has been willing to pay for. When we went from VHS to DVD, everybody moved to DVD. When we went from SD to HD, everybody went to HD. When we went from 720 to 1080, big screen, everything has gone 1080. And now from DVD to Blu-ray, everything is moving to Blu-ray, well, everything is not streaming, is moving to, is moving to Blu-ray. So the consumer has always appreciated it better picture quality. So it, we're an industry, we always have to have the next best thing, right? But the, the point is that it is demonstrably better than the thing before it, not incrementally better. In 1080p over the last few years, we've had incremental improvements, hard for people to see without putting a still frame up or a certain image, with, with 4K, it is totally different. I keep calling it the wow experience. And why do I call it that? It's because I look at 4K every week, you know, as we're getting ready for a launch. And every single time I sit down in front of that TV and I look at that picture, I say to myself, wow, right? If I'm gonna do that and I'm jaded, then the consumer is really going to do that. And that is the important thing. We have, and we haven't had this industry for a long time, a chance, we have a wow experience for the consumer that they're going to see and easily appreciate. Now, this, I, I'm wondering, I've heard a lot of people say that the transition from standard def to high def was this wow experience, seriously. But that from high def to 4K or UHD may be less of a giant leap. What do you, what do you guys think? It may be less of a giant leap, but it's still a significant leap that people will be able to see. Even a untrained eye, when you put side by side a 4K set with a, a 1080p set, people can tell that there's something different about it. And you know, that, again, that's what's going to attract people because we can talk about features and benefits, but unless they can really be paid off in the experience, it's going to fall on deaf ears. Right, something else to keep in mind, uh, we're progressing, you saw in the slide, uh, earlier slides, we're progressing to larger and larger screens. So if we just kept status quo, uh, that, that full HD experience would be degraded, the pixel would get larger, sure. and also we'll, we'll see more picture artifacts, so uh, there's a natural need to move to higher resolution. Well, that brings up the other question that I had based on Scott on what you were saying, uh, that with Ultra HD, you can sit closer to the screen, you can have a bigger screen, but I've also heard a lot of people talk about how in the living room, the typical living room, you know, people sit 8 to 10 feet away from their screen, regardless of size. I mean, they get a 42-inch set and they're sitting 10 feet away. Uh, do you think people will, uh, when they get an Ultra HD display, actually move their seat closer? So, some people will, but I think when I speak to people today, many people I talk to say, oh, I can't fit a 65-inch, oh, I can never fit an 84-inch. And uh, because they just feel it's too big, they feel they're sitting too close. When they experience Ultra HD, I don't think they'll say that anymore. When they sit close, it will feel natural. It will feel better. And so I think it will change the decision on how large of a TV that, that they would want to have in that room. I, I would agree with that. I, I don't think that many people will actually change their viewing distance to the television, but I think as Scott points out, uh, it's going to encourage you know, an uptake of even larger screens. And, you know, we already have in the industry, you know, up to 90 inch screen size in the industry. And so I think you're going to see, you know, very significant growth in the 60, the 70, the 80 inch uh, screen size class with uh, the adoption of Ultra HD. Well, certainly we saw in one of the slides earlier that, that the increase in acceptance and adoption and shipment of larger screen sizes may indicate that. And in fact, that may be the equivalent of moving closer to the screen by getting simply a larger screen. Certainly, I recommend to people when they say, oh, what size TV should I get? I say, well, get a larger one than you think, yeah. you know? Um, but this brings up the next question that I had for you all, which is still, we have now up to 90-inch displays, uh, flat panels from Sharp, and other companies are coming out with larger ones, the UHDs are 84, 85 inches. Still at all, those are going to be pretty expensive. So most people are going to be buying the 55 and the 65 inch sets, which are now starting to come out as well. Um, how much benefit does UHD offer at those screen sizes? 
from my point right. of view, it's huge. And uh, I think regardless of whether it's 84 or 65, to most people, those are all big screens. <laughs> and the, the average, we, again, it comes back to us being jaded in the industry, but the average screen size that's being sold in American tech is 39 or 40 inches. So, a 65 inch TV is very large. It's huge, right? Yeah. So, By so comparison, yeah. we walk around these floors and we see 65 and the largest size, we say, oh, I want the 84 or your 19 year case. But, but, but 50 is big for, for a normal person, 55 is big, 58 and 65 is real big. And so, I think, I think it, has a, it has a huge, huge benefit to the consumer, and again, especially as they, as they get closer. Right. And it's still going to have the wow yeah. factor that when you look at it versus a 1080p set. It's, the value is going to be there, and uh, you know a lot of people who had a 42, 47, or 50 inch that didn't think they could get a bigger screen, it is still a step up in screen size, and it's uh, and the value is there, so it's it's going to be a, a huge advantage to have 4K at those sizes. And, and not to not to recap everything I said before, but it's about the total immersion, right? It's not just about the uh, the smaller pixel where you can't see any right? any structure. It's about the complete immersion, and that's about sitting closer, wider field of view. A wider color gamut and, uh, and a greater bit depth. Uh, well, you bring up then the next topic that I want to discuss, and it might be a little sensitive, so let me be careful. <laughs> um, all of you have come out or are coming out with uh, the first generation of UHD TVs. And it's a bit of, I, I've talked to various people at the show yesterday and today about how it's a bit of a chicken and egg problem, right? You got no one's going to make content if there are no displays, but no one's going to make displays if there's no content. The display manufacturers have decided to go first, and I applaud you for that. <laughs> um, but still, there are many technical issues that have not yet been finalized. Wider color gamut being one. Exactly what's the color gamut going to be? Are we going to have a standard like Rec. 709 that we have now? Uh, what about bit depth? What about uh, HDMI 2.0, which is, hasn't even you know, been finalized? Um, how will the first generation TVs deal with these evolving standards? So, uh, a couple of things. Number one is, uh, and I think for all of us on this panel here with the televisions that we're bringing to market, um, we are very focused on upscaling. Yes. Um, and, and this is something that when you take a, a 1080p signal, and you upscale it to an ultra HD signal, it looks, it renders beautifully on, well, on the upscaler. If the upscaler is good, but I think you know we're all working on, on, on premium type of upscalers. So yes. the point is, is consumers today have a lot of great content available to them in HD, whether that be uh, Blu-ray discs, whether that be content that they're streaming over the internet. So you know, while to your point, all of the standards are not yet finalized, and you know this is a category that's going to all, uh, consumers can enjoy a better picture with all the content that they have today uh, on these first generation sets. Now, with regards to you know what happens you know a year or two or three years uh, down the road with some of these uh, evolving standards, be it HDMI or uh, be it uh, H.265, uh, when those do get finalized, you know uh, as a manufacturer, uh, you know, we don't have a solution today. But I can tell you that our, our engineers are very aware, aware of, of what these uh, you know, potential uh, upgrades are going to be. And you know, as we get as these standards get finalized, uh, we're going to, to work on coming up with a solution so that our, our first generation adopters uh, are able to, to have some type of uh, upgrade path. I don't have all the details, I don't have all the answers of that today, but you can, uh, you can be sure that, uh, that we're looking very closely at that.